Hey, this is James Pelton. I have a project for you today. Um, this is called Paper Hands vs. Holders. So it's kind of a play on um, a risk to earn game. Um, so kind of similar to Police and Thief, but then again, it's kind of got some of the node qualities to it. So I met George, who is the founder there, and he private doxed to me. And I have an AMA with him, so uh, I'd like you to listen to that. Uh, but all in all, it's a pretty interesting project. He knows a lot about tokenomics. He's seen a lot of things that have gone wrong. Um, and he thinks that he's found a way to fix a lot of them. So go ahead and listen to the AMA. Uh, look through the white paper. Read about the tokenomics. Um, again, make your own decision. This is launching April 5th. Um, as part of this video, I am giving away 20 whitelist spots. So I also have a Twitter giveaway where I'm giving away 20 whitelist spots. Giving away another 20 whitelist spots as part of this video. So I hope you enjoy getting to meet George and this AMA. All right. This is James Pelton, and I am here with George from Paper Hands vs. Holders. Uh, George, thank you so much for joining me and talking through your project. Hey, thank you very much for having me. It is a pleasure to be here. Yes, no, it's awesome. I'm, I think this is a really fun project. Um, it's kind of a clever idea. So I wanted to walk through it a little bit. Uh, maybe before we get into it, we could talk. We were talking about this off air a little bit, but just getting it, you know, on camera. Uh, but could you talk a little bit about um, just the doxing? Okay, the doxing process. Sometimes people ask me, "Hey, how come they won't show their face, and how come they won't they won't dox to you?" Would you kind of just explain um, your thoughts on doxing and why you're deciding to not? You have private docs to me and to a few other people as well. Um, but could you just talk about uh, public doxing and why you've decided not to do that? Yeah, well, basically, uh, I'm from South America, a country in, in South America where mafia people, they just mess within their own business, but they go and damage uh, people when they know they're doing good. Like they do extortion, they do kidnapping and all sorts of stuff. Of stuff. So I actually have a company, IRL, and my family, my mom and dad live in the same uh, city I live at. Um, I don't want my family or my company or anyone to be at risk. And that's the only reason I don't do public doxing. Uh, I mean, if I were in Nebraska or Europe or I don't know, anywhere else, I would dox myself and if all of my family were there, I would do it without an issue. Yeah, no, and we were talking about, yeah, I live in Nebraska, Roca, Nebraska, and yeah, I don't think there's any, any mafia here, like the, the mafia farmers, maybe, or, or something like that, but uh, yes, <laughs> no, and that makes a lot of sense, so, and uh, me and George, we had a good talk before this, so when he has private docs to me, he's sending over his social media to me and everything, um, so yeah, I, I like him, he's, he's got a nice face, I'll tell you that, so. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, so let's go ahead and talk through your project a little bit. So I'm actually going to share my screen um, just to, from your website, and we can just walk through it just a little bit. So this is your project. Do you want to just talk through um, what the project is and kind of like how you came to this idea? Well, first of all, how I came to, to this idea. Um, it is good for you guys to know that this is my first project because this is a question that I get a lot. Um, what projects have you been at? And I believe uh, you shouldn't want a, a person that uh, tell you, oh, well, this is my number 50 project, because that means that they're jumping from one project to the next one, to the next one, to the next one, and they haven't get one right, because believe me, once you get one right, you're gonna stick to that project. So this is my first uh, project, and I hope it is that project. The team uh, is not their first project, but for, for me, is is my first project. But devs have been around any, a, a lot of a lot more projects. So why I came to this is because uh, I got myself into another project as an investor, and I start I started uh, recognize, recognizing what were they, their flaws, um, and like whenever one of those flaws was going to occur. I just got out of the project, but I got so upset because I wasted all my time going through tokenomics, going through everything. But then I noticed that 
at some point, the admins of the project just took a bad decision. Um, bam, that, that was very bad. And I knew that was gonna happen. So I just got out and then go and find another project and let's keep doing that over and over and over and over again. So I got frustrated and I say, look, if I have an IRL company that is successful, successful, I should be able to create a crypto project that is successful if we make the right decisions. And that's uh, how we got into it. So basically this project is based on looking into other projects uh, false and we try to address those and do what we believe is a good solution for, for those projects. Okay, very cool. So it's kind of going the direction of like the play to earn games, right? Like pizza and some of those, but you have a few different spins on it. Could you explain maybe what the difference is between like we've seen, you know, like Wolf Game, we've seen just a ton of Wolf Game type clones. Could you kind of maybe talk through a little bit what's different about uh, paper hands versus holders compared to those? Well, yeah, basically the first thing will be um, that we believe that the first project that came out with the R2E uh, and yeah, name or tag, it's just, you know, everyone was coming out with a new name, like, no, that's a service, that's a service. Everyone was coming out with new names. So these guys created this new project. I don't know if were the wolf guys or the police thief guys. I don't know who was that, but they say, okay, we know that people is not playing here. So, but this look like a game because, you know, we have a story and these people are still from this one. Uh, okay, so wh what do we do? And they wanted, uh, they wanted it to look like play to earn. So they just did R2E, that means risk to earn, but this is not a play to earn at all. And no, no, no R2Es are play to earn. I mean, there is no single R2E that are play to earn because for me, a play to earn is something that you go, you buy, buy a weapon or buy, I don't know, defenses for your place. And then you fight with other accounts. And then if you win, then you get tokens. That's what, what a play to earn is for me. Here you just stake your NFTs and claim your rewards. That's it. So for me, R2Es are really a uh, node projects, not, not play to earn or anything like that. Okay. No, and I think that's a really helpful distinction to make because we're we're starting to see, I'm gonna have a few videos on my channel in the upcoming weeks of actual play to earn games where it's like the better that you it's a game, and the better that you play the game, the more that you earn. So I think you're right. This is these are more like risk to earn games. Um, and they're kind of just like, yeah, economic experiments, but I think they're really, they're really fascinating. Um, so do you want to maybe talk through uh, as far as risk to earn games go, like how you would be different than a police and thief? Okay, right now, one of the main uh, things that we have different to any other uh, R2E game uh, or R2E project is that we have a max supply. So uh, we're not infinite, uh, infinity rewarding people. Uh, we have a max supply that actually cannot be um, calculated because it will depend on how uh, people manage to uh, do this. Uh, what is their strategy on doing this? If they are really, uh, if they really understand our concept and they become uh, holders, and they change their NFTs into holders, then our supply is gonna be much slower, but the max that we will get was the number that, that you had on top, that is uh, 440 million total, but that will be our max supply. So that is one difference. Uh, so uh, talking about that, the NFTs have a max, a maximum that they can claim, which is uh, 22K. That's a 22K hodl for each um, NFT. We have two different kinds of NFTs. Uh, ones are the paper hands and ones are the holders. Um, you have a 5% chances of getting a holder and 95% chances of getting a paper hand. Th th this is a very important thing because that's in generation zero. 
but once you mine generation one to five, in other projects, what will happen is that you will have a chance to actually lose your, your NFT as soon as you mine it. So let's say you spend $300 on mining and you're gonna get a nice pop-up message saying, oh, your NFT just got kidnapped. So you just lose $300. And I really got this when that happened to me, like lots of times. So uh, actually people here won't be uh, having that uh, danger of having their NFTs stolen or anything like that uh, after generation zero. But people are, is not gonna uh, have the risk of getting their NFTs stolen. But they're gonna get only paper hands for in generation one to five. Why is that? Why not getting uh, holders? Because every paper hand, just like in real life, can become a holder. So what we're aiming with this project, I don't know if you know Robert Kiyosaki and the cash flow game. Oh yes, oh yes. So what they aim with that is teaching people how to invest and how to take care of their uh, uh, assets and stuff. So what we're aiming with this project is teach people that hodl is the way. Like, the, I mean, we've been in, in a situation in the crypto space uh, in the last days where everyone is giving so unrealistic uh, promises to people. They just tell people what they want to hear. Basically, they create a, a Ponzi scheme and everyone is hyper uh, about that Ponzi scheme. And it's so easy to see it, but people just get in there and, and, and that's not okay. So what we're trying to explain people here is, this is not a project where you're gonna get your money back in two days. This is not that kind of project. You need to stick with it. You need to be part of, of the community. You need to hold. And this is like real life. Uh, imagine someone when Jim Bezos started his uh, online library and, and maybe he got, I don't know, 5% of, of that company, which at that moment, maybe Jeff Bezos could have uh, sold that to this person in, in let's say $10,000. If he w w uh, sold what he had the next two months, he would have made, uh, maybe he would be on losses. Maybe he would have uh, been losing his money. But if he is stuck with the project, by, by this time, this person will be a millionaire. So in real life and in crypto, you need to call. You need to be a good holder in order to get good profit. And if you believe in a project, there is no reason for you to be dumping the project because you're just going against yourself when you do that. You do it against yourself. So that is not smart. So that's what we plan to do with this. So for example, when people get paper hands, um, they at first level, uh, if they claim, they need to pay a 90% tax, which is a, a, a huge bill. So what, what do they need to do to claim less tax? Well, hold, just wait. If you wait for 24 hours, then you get to be level two and so on until you get to level six and then you'll have only a claim tax of 10%. There is another thing. Let's say that at day five, you are already a paper on level five and the market, I mean, our token is going so well, you say, you know what? I'm gonna uh, claim and sell right away. Where well, you're gonna get only a 20% tax, but guess what? Your NFT will go back to be level one. But if you wait until you're level six, your NFT will keep being level six. So it's kind of teaching people, uh, if you want, a project to be successful, you need to support it and not keep on dumping, 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 dumping the token. Gotcha. Okay, so just to make sure that I understand it correctly. So every NFT that's minted will start as a paper hand. So there's, so you, you kind of have the two NFT system like police and thief, but everyone starts with as a paper hand. And then as you wait each day, you level up. When you get to level six, you can go ahead and claim and you stay at level six. Is that correct? Yes and no. At generation zero, 
is the only chance where you got a 5% chance of mining a whole group. Okay. It's the only chance that you get. Okay. In generation zero. Gotcha. Yeah. Other than that, once you get to level six, you can remain at level six and uh, pay only 10% 10, 10 tax, which you will be claiming uh, 100 each day, 100 holders each day. But if you at that moment say, you know what? I want to become a holder, NFT, you just pay 2,000 hold, and then you upgrade your NFT to be a, a holder NFT, which will give you 40, uh, 40 hold a day, uh, like 19 hold, but then it will give you a maximum of, of 100 more hold a day from taxes from, hold, from paper hands. So okay. that is why, why I told you that there is no way that we know what the max supply is going to be because the more holders we have, the less supply is going to be. They're going to be able to claim the same amount, uh, the 140 hodl per day, but 100 of those hodl a day are not being minted. They were just taxes that came from paper hands. Gotcha. No, it's very interesting. I This is one of the things I love about the crypto space is just like you're able to make your own take on this. And then this, so this is kind of an experiment, right? Like, um, can I ask you, have you guys been able to do like simulations as to like how, you, you know, if depending on how people play this? Yeah, actually, uh, I have, uh, I mean, within the team, there are two people that are members not not team members but just they have subscription in crypto nerds uh, which i do too by the way and i got to know them and they're very smart people and one of them is jive with most of people know him and the other one is robert with not a lot of people know him but jive is a very very smart guy with tokenomics whenever you use you are in an ama and if he's there he's gonna be making the hardest and the toughest questions to projects <laughs> like they he, he give them a really hard time it so hard that people have get mad of him of making uh, the project look bad on AMAs. so uh, sensei when i started talking about this project to him he told me look take it to jive if he says it's good it's good so i went and and asked jive and we start he's, he look at it he liked it but then, then he also suggested some things. And Robert also did. Uh, Robert is an economist. So he did a simulation on how this will work. And there are so many things. I mean, I know that the AMA doesn't have all the time because like our last AMA got for two hours. So like, and I, I know you, you don't want to make a really long, long video, but there are a whole amount of things like, um, what makes us uh, very, very different, I'm telling you not to dump our project by selling HODL. So how can you get profit out of this if you don't dump the token? Because that's what projects do, right? I mean, your, your, your token get more uh, high on price. So how else is, gonna, is going people to get their money out if they don't dump on the market? Well, we have three staking bolts. And in, in these staking bots, if you stay hold on, one of them you get AVAX out, and the other one you get USDC out. And the third one you get more hold out so that you can go and stake more hold in the other two bots and keep getting passive income out of another token, not our token. So you're getting, you, are, you can actually get passive incomes without selling our token, which is great. And we have a sell tax, which will keep on refilling the USDC vault and the HODL vault. So it's refilling and, and it's a cycle. It keeps going. The more paper hand we get, if the price is high, then the more uh, funds are gonna be in the vault. So if, if, the, if the market is down, people will want to go and buy back so they can get those tokens out, out of the bonds. Very, that's very, it's very fascinating. So that's, that's awesome that you have worked so much through the tokenomics and, and I can just tell that, yeah, you've kept your eye on 
a lot of the other projects and just yeah, seeing what what why they failed and what hasn't worked. Um, and I love the educational aspect of this too, like just teaching people, like you literally call them paper hands and holders. I think that's super clever. Um, I like that a lot. So very well done uh, putting this together for it being your first project. I, I just think it's, it's really clever and really well thought out. And I love that you too, you, you uh, have gone to people who really know what they're talking about and taken feedback and then kind of adjusted things um, based on that. So yeah, just really well done job. Yeah, we have a lot of, I mean, there is still a lot of things that, 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 that I, I, we have different, like a huge thing that came from Robert. Um, I, we were going to do the same that most R3 projects do. Um, I didn't thought that well, I have to be honest, but then Robert is a very smart guy and he, he, he told me another idea and then we modify it. So what most R3 do, do is whenever they, they have Gen 1, and people start buying the NFTs with the in-project token, those tokens get burned. But those tokens, we don't burn tokens. Why? Because let's say you have 1 million tokens, and then you go and burn half of them, like in, in an instant. You just double the price in the market right away. So you just gave people a reason to dump your token. Hmm. So what we do instead of that, we have a locket treasury that will be renounced right away, where all the time with sell tax, with buybacks, with uh, people upgrading their tokens, with generation one to five, all those hodl are going to that locket treasury. So basically we're building a massive well that believes in the project and that won't ever sell. That is the, 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 the maximum believer of, of paper and versus holder. It will never dump on the project. What that creates is a stability because mm. it makes it harder to dump on the, on the token. That's very interesting because, yeah, you would think burning sounds good, right? Like it's kind of counterintuitive because burning tokens and the price going way up sounds good. But you're right. Those people who got in here when the price of the token doubles, they there's no way they're going to hold on to it they're all going to sell because they're like oh yeah. look at this profit so um it's counterintuitive and um yeah that's that's really smart and that's a that's an example of where we're seeing when you do these experiments in real life things don't always work out the way that you think they're going to um so yeah that's that's super clever super well thought out okay there is some other thing i'm sorry this we have so many so many things uh, when JR Finance joined the project, they liked it so much, and they started to, to talk to me and say, you know what, this is good, but let me tell you, even if you have the balls and everything, I'm going to dump your project on the sixth day. Why? Because I'm all in for the money, and I want to get my ROI, and if I know that I'm going to get a lot of uh, uh, money out of this, I'm going to do it. Uh, but, but we want to be in the project and we want it to be more sustainable. So what we recommend you is to have in a well tax. And I really didn't thought about that. And I thought that people was not going to be interested, but the more they explained it to me and the more they uh, tell me why this was right, I thought, well, you know what? Let's do this. I couldn't just modify the white paper at the moment and just tell people, oh, it, this is not gonna be the way it is. Uh, so what we went on and do, we made this poll uh, in the community. I hope you can check out it at, at some point and uh, where wells are going to get a higher tax if they want to dump on the market. So basically it works like this. If your wallet is holding an NFT from our project, you can uh, sell uh, with 10% sell tax, 100 hobo. But then if you want to sell more than 100, you're going to get a 50% tax. This is every 24 hours epoch. Hmm. So if you sell more than that, you pay 50% tax. But there is a measure where if you want to sell a bit more, you can do it with less tax. So the second transaction, you can do it with another 100 hold, and that will give you a 20% tax. The third one, a 30% tax. The fourth one, 
a 40% tax. And then even if you sell uh, 10 hodl, after that, it will charge you 50% within that 24 hour epoch. So with this thing, we just became a, a, a DAAS because what we're doing with the overtax, not just refilling more the bolts, but we're creating a treasury where we're going to go and invest in good projects, let's say Hive, for example. And then what we're gonna do is take those earnings back to the buyback contract, which in the buyback contract, the only thing that we can do with that is buyback total. And what happened when we do that, half of the hodl go to the locket treasury and half of the hodl go to the hodl wall. So we, we're just giving more value to the token and more reasons for people to keep getting in uh, with this wealth tax. But if you're not holding an NFT, then you can trade whatever amount you want uh, with only a 10% tax. Why is this? Well, basically, because we want day trading. We want people to swing trade because they can get a 10% tax. And if we do uh, uh, this with everyone else, uh, the, the wealth tax, then uh, traders are not gonna be interested in our token at all. And at some point, we expect to be in an in, in exchange. So we need to keep that 10% uh, tax only for people that is um, within the project and with the NFTs. And, and, and the amazing thing is that uh, like 110 people have voted and 100 have said, let's do the world tax. And only 10 people have said, no, don't do that. So it's amazing. I, I mean, I, I'm amazed with how smart is the community and how tired these people from getting these uh, Ponzi schemes. So there is that, I'm sorry, I'm almost doing a monologue here. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. That's good. That's good to think through. I'm thinking through it as you're talking through it. So no, that's really good. Um, okay, well, a couple more things. So you have the story here on the website. Um, you do have a sneak peek of the dashboard. So this is kind of what we're gonna be looking at on the dashboard. A um, Couple questions that I had, uh, first off, when, uh, for people who see this and they listen to you and they're like, oh yeah, I want to get involved. Can you kind of give us some dates of like when people need to get involved? Are you doing a whitelist launch and how's that all going to work and what, what dates do we need to keep our eyes open for? Okay. Um, we have, and this is something that we have get criticism on as well. We have 1000, uh, whitelist spots, but it's not because we want to sell out on whitelist spots because uh, every whitelist can only mine two NFTs. So there are only a, a chance of 2,000 NFTs being mined by whitelist people. But why do we do this? Because we believe that people is the mess, best marketing there is. So this is why we are giving this amount of uh, whitelist uh, right now. And for you to get whitelist right now, it's actually very easy, you just only need two invites in the Discord and be active on the server. You need to get a uh, level eight, uh, rank level eight in Discord, which actually is not that hard because uh, it's, if, if, if you're talking about chatting in the general, like we have a smart chat, you will take, it will take you like three hours. And then if you divide it in the days that from we're about to launch, that will be like 30, or 30 minutes a day of, of talking maybe. And we're gonna launch the on 5th April. So that's one day that you want to, to take into consideration. Um, we actually have a poll right now on what time people would like us to launch. Uh, it's, it's running right now. So I, I will invite you to go and check. And uh, I will also encourage you to go and vote for the other poll, for the wealth poll, because that's a, an ongoing poll until uh, April 3rd. So that's another uh, important day. That day, if that changed, then we change the, the, the white paper. Well, it, it's not the tokenomics, just the white paper in the very uh, last part is gonna have well selling tax, explain it. But everything else is just the same. Okay, very cool. Then uh, can we give away some white lists as part of this video? Would you be up for that? Yeah, of course, of course. Let's, how, how many, uh, why list do you want? This is very important because 
People sometimes get mad because, hey, I just got wireless. Sorry, if you get wireless in our, in our, uh, in our, in our server, you still need to be active. So even if people is wireless, we're still asking them to get a rank level six. We don't want uh, phantoms. We, we don't want ghosts on, right. on our server. Yeah. So uh, it, with that said, we can give, we just g- gave 20 uh, wireless spots in Twitter with you uh, like one week ago. Let's do another 20 wireless spots. We're okay with that. Yeah. But remember, if you get the wireless, you need to be active on the server to be able to to be wireless uh, uh, for real. Yes. Yeah. Please don't enter to win the whitelist if you're not going to use it, because um, yeah, that's uh, we. I only want people who are going to use the whitelist to get the whitelist. So yes, very, very. Thank you so much. That's very generous. Okay. No problem. Awesome. Well, I think that's all the questions that I have. Um, this is su- super cool. I, I like it. I just I get fired up when I read white papers and when I talk to founders. So I'm I'm excited for this. Um, I'm ready to ready to mint, ready for launch. Um, is there anything else that you wanna wanna share? Anything else that you wanna walk through? Oh, just uh, please, everyone, just read the white paper, uh, do your own research. Uh, we're not here to to tell everyone what they want to hear. We're not the project where you can get profit. Uh, the next day, um, please read it through, go through the whole thing before you make a decision, because what we want in the community is the right people to be in, because that way this project is going to be huge. And, and we are all about building a community of holders. So that's what we're looking for. Awesome. Very cool. Well, it was awesome to meet you. It was nice to hear your story. Um, cool to hear about your project. So yeah, thanks for thanks for hopping on with me. I appreciate it. All right. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me. And well, let's let's go. Let's okay, do let's do it. Well, we'll see you on April 5th. Yeah, let, let's do that. Oh, but by the way, um, just a quick thing. I I believe that we're gonna we're gonna have um a Twitter AMA also with you. Um is is it your friend Andy? Yes, yep. And DK Investor. Uh, I'm planning to have this, and this is why I made the poll on the on the lunch uh, hour because I asked uh, one of you what will be a good time for it. Um, I think we're gonna have a Twitter AMA right uh, before we launch, like 20 minutes before we we will uh, be doing that. So like we wanna, I want us to be like watching how it goes. Yes. So that that's another another. Uh, a nice thing that I wanted to talk. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to uh, put that into the the AMA at all. It's, it's up to you. Just uh, yes. Di- di- didn't know if Andy talked to you about that as well. Yeah, I actually just got off the phone with him before this, and yeah, uh, we're all looking right. forward to that. So, all right. Well, thank you very much, James. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you around. You know. Yep. Sounds great. Thanks, man. Appreciate your time. All right. Well, thanks for watching that AMA with uh, George from Paper Hands vs. Holders. Um, just a super nice guy. Again, he he did private docs to me, and we had a good conversation before. Um, I am such a sucker for nice guys. Like I just I just want all these projects to succeed. Um, that's why you see just such volume on my channel. Is it's just like I see these projects that I want to succeed, and so I want to get them out there to you. So please do uh, like. Subscribe, comment, appreciate you guys, appreciate all your support, and uh, we'll have more videos. I think tomorrow I'm going to start doing two videos a day, at least for a few days, just because I have more projects to get out there than there are days to get them out. So thank you guys all for watching, and have a good rest of your day.